So I have recently found out something really interesting, and it's the fact that you can add post-processing effects to Roblox's user interface. But to be exact, it's not really any UI, it's actually Surface GUIs that you can for example place in front of the player's camera. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, also check out my Patreon content, but let's just get to the video. So I have actually stumbled upon this tweet by Onogorg, where they say that Roblox's post-processing effects are applied to Surface GUIs. And there is a link to this create page on Roblox, where you can actually get this model. And everything is going to be down in the description. But basically how everything works, is as you can see from this video right here, you have the screen GUI under the player's GUI, which doesn't actually apply this effect, but if I start playing the video, you can see that this effect is going to be applied whenever this frame is dragged to the word screen GUI. And I've also made this in another project from a distortion effect that was using Perlin noise. And there is a little bit more to actually show, for example like this video right here. Where I can see this effect in pretty much full action, where in my opinion this is being greatly utilized. So again, I'm also going to leave a link to this tweet down in the description, but let's actually go to the model now. And the link is going to take you to this page right here, again by Onogorg, titled Post Processing GUI. And I already have this model, but for you this button is going to say Get Model, where you can actually get it and it's going to go under your inventory. So if I go into Roblox Studio, I first need to get the model from the toolbox. So if I go to my inventory, it's going to be under the My Model tab. And I can simply just insert it, and then move the post-processing GUI script into the starter player scripts. So I can drag it right there, and then simply just do a playtest. And you can already see that we have some pretty neat effects. But for now this is only one of them, where if I go to the player instance, then my player, then under the player GUI, I'm going to have the word screen GUI right here. And if I expand it, there is going to be the videotape, which is the effect that's currently running, as well as the deter. And I can simply just toggle them by changing the visibility property of the frame. And I can simply just, for example, disable it. And now there is still going to be some stuff left, because the script from the starter player scripts also changes some lighting settings. And it's mainly the color correction, that I can again disable. And there is also the fog, the gloom and some of the other different stuff that I'm not going to change because I don't want to bore you guys. But now I'm going to actually enable the deter effect, so if I just make the frame visible, you can see how it actually changes. And I'm also going to mention how this effect is achieved in a second. So you can see that everything is black and white now, and I can actually enable both of these effects at once. So this is both the deter and the videotape, and this is the videotape without the deter. And something doesn't seem to be right, so I'm just going to press them again. Okay, well, and now it's correct, and this is still pretty cool. I have pretty much both of these effects enabled at the same time. So well props to the creator for actually coming up with this. And again I recommend that you guys check this model out and basically check it out yourself. But now I'm going to talk about how this effect is achieved and it's simply by having a part in the workspace and it's this part right here, because like I mentioned previously, these post-processing effects are applied to a surface GUI. And this part, as you can see from the bounding box, it's said to be the same size as the camera. And this part has the previously mentioned surface GUI, basically on this face right here, that's pointing towards my camera. And these effects right here are actually done through scripting. So if I expand the word screen GUI again, and actually expand both of the frames, there is going to be the light change in both of these scripts. And this light change is, like I said, this is about changing the lightning settings for the effects, and these scripts have different settings for the preset. But after that, in the videotape frame, there is also the colors frame, which has a lot of these different colors, and all of these instances are image labels, but you also have the glare, the perlin noise, as well as the tape lines. And you have these two different scripts inside of them. But now I'm actually just going to pause the scripts. For example, first I'm just going to disable the randomized position, where you can actually see that this is a noise map. And this noise map, if I go to the script, just changes its position in the run service function, where you basically just choose a random values of the pixel coordinate of the UDIM2 position. And I should actually zoom this a little bit in, but anyways, how this position is set is like I said with the run service, and if I go to the UI, which is going to be the Perlin noise, it basically just sets the position property from right here. You have both the X and Y values, set to the 0.5 scale from right here, and then the randomly selected offset from minus 250 to 250 range. 
and this is basically how the noise effect is achieved. And now there is also going to be the tape lines, for which again I can disable the pan script, and it's actually going to make the tape lines just stop moving. And I'm actually just going to delete the perlin noise, just so it's a little bit easier to see. And basically what this pan script does, all it does is move this image of these tape lines down. If I go to the script, Again, this is going to be a run service function that sets the offset of the position of the UI on the Y value. So the effect can basically look very complicated, but it's actually again really simple to make. But then there is the glare, which I can simply just disable and enable, and it's just going to make the screen a little bit lighter. I'm going to show more of this in a bit, but I wanted to firstly talk about the colors. Because you can kind of see how we have this well dotted effect, for example in the sky or on the base plate, or even mostly on the edges of the fog right here. And now what these colors are, they are again simply an image. I'm going to zoom the video a little bit in, where you can see for example how there is the green dots, the red dots and the white dots as well. That simply if I start to well disable, you can basically see how not only it changes the color, but how it's also getting rid of the dotted effect. You can well clearly see how now it's going to be 100% of red dots and if I enable the green ones, the effect is going to be the same but with a different color. So all of these images are basically the same, except they have a little bit of a different offset. And all of them combined together give a pretty nice visual post-processing effect. And what about the deter effect now? Right here well you have the split which I can enable and disable. And how this one works is by simply making a layer in front of the camera where combined with the lighting settings, it makes the whole screen well visible and rendered, creating this deter effect. And I need to say that it's nice actually seeing post-processing effects, or at least a workaround of them, in Roblox Studio. And to overview the rest of this model, I actually need to stop the playtest, but well, it felt nice to be on the original base plate, at least for a second. But anyways, there is still the post-processing GUI right here, under the starter player scripts, which actually creates the part, as well as the UI surface, where you have the offset distance, and you get the current camera and its viewport size, divided into the height and width, and then set the pass position and size, to be corresponding to the viewport size. So even if I try to change the size of this window, it's actually going to be responsive. And I should actually present this while having the part selected. So again, it's going to work even if I change the size of my viewport. And also everything is explained in this comment on top, so you can read it if you want. So right now I'm just going to go to the player scripts and disable the post-processing GUI from right here. And what this is going to do if I go to this part, is actually just going to make it stay in place. And well, it's really interesting to see that all of this effect is simply this. I'm going to position my camera a little bit closer, so it's going to be a little bit easier to see. So now the world screen GUI is going to be selected right here from inside of this part. Then there is going to be the detail frame that again I can make visible, and that might actually have been a mistake, but you can see how the frame or, well, what's left of it is changing from visible to invisible right here. But the videotape on the other hand is going to make the whole thing disappear because the biggest square right here, this is the Perlin noise, where if I expand this, go to the Perlin noise, you can see that this jittering frame is this image label selected right here, that I can again make visible or invisible. And it's going to be the same for the tape lines, as well as the glare frame. And lastly here are the colors. So yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and again, go check out my Patreon page, and even like and subscribe to support the channel. But yeah, thank you for watching, hope everyone had a nice day, and see you guys.